Chapter 3, Classification and Botanical Characteristics The common or Irish potato is known botanically as Solanum tuberosum. This name was first applied to it by Bohin in his Phytopinax in 1596, page 15, and later adopted by Linnaeus. In the same family, Solanaceae, are many other plants of economic importance, as tomato, eggplant, tobacco, belladonna, henbane, and capsicum or red pepper. Baker has reviewed the tuber-bearing species of solanum from a systematic point of view as well as that of geographic distribution. Out of 20 so-called species, he considers six to be really distinct, while the others are synonymous or trifling variations. The six admitted tuber-bearing species are S. tuberosum, S. maglia, S. commersonii, S. cardiophyllum, S. jamesii, S. oxycarpum, two, three, four, five, Okay, that's the six. See also standard cyclohort, 6, 3181. The following descriptions of species have been taken from Baker's, a review of tuber-bearing species of Solanum. Linnaean Society Journal, Boat, I guess Botanical, XX is 20, and it's pages 489 to 507, PLS. Solanum tuberosum, L-I-N-N, stem stout, erect, much branched, one to two feet long, slightly hairy, distinctly winged on the angles, leaves one to two feet long, slightly hairy, with seven to nine finely pilose oblong acute leaflets, the side ones stalked and unequally chordate at the base, the one to two lowest pairs much dwarfed. Pediole about one inch long, numerous small leaflets between larger ones, flowers in compound terminal cymes with long peduncles, corolla wheel shaped dark lilac, nearly one inch in diameter, calyx hairy, one fourth to one third inch long, with teeth as long or as or a little longer than the campanulate tube, berry globose, less than an inch in diameter smooth, native of Chile and Ecuador. Solanum maglia, schlecht, stem stout, erect, much branched, one to two feet long, strongly winged on angles, slightly hairy, leaves six to nine inches long, larger leaflets, five to seven, ovate, acute, two to three inches long, side one stalked, unequally chordate at base, Flowers in compound cymes, pedicles downy, corolla white, subrotate three fourths to one inch in diameter, styled twice as long as the stamens, fruit not seen. Solanum commersoni. Do now. Stem shorter and more slender than an S. tuberosum, leaves five to six inches long with a naked petiole one to one and a half inches long. Five to nine oblong acute leaflets, the terminal one much the longest, the ratchets entirely without any of the small leaflets interspersed among the larger ones, flowers in lax compound cymes, calyx one six to one fourth inch long, corolla pale lilac or white, anthers orange yellow, style distinctly exerted beyond the anthers, South America. Solanum cardiophyllum, Lindley, of the same general habit as S. tuberosum. No small leaflets interspersed among the large ones. Whole plant quite glabrous, foliage very dark green. 
leaflets five, large, ovate, acute, flowers in compound cymes, calyx glabrous, style scarcely longer than the stamens, mountains of central Mexico at an elevation of 8,000 to 9,000 feet. Solanum jamisai, tori, minute globose tubers, leaves distinctly pediolate, with five to nine oblong acute leaflets, no smaller leaflets interspersed among the longer ones. Symes few flowered, corolla white, fruit globose, mountains of southwestern United States and Mexico. Solanum oxycarpum, skied, tubers minute, leaflets five to nine, oblong lanceolate with no smaller leaflets interspersed among the larger ones. Symes few flowered, fruit ellipsoidal. Description of the Irish potato. The common potato owes its value to the peculiar habit of developing underground slender leafless shoots or branches which differ in character and office from the two true roots <clears throat> and gradually swelling at the free end produce the tubers, potatoes, which are the common vegetable food. The nature of these tubers is further rendered evident by the presence of eyes or leaf buds, which in due time lengthen into shoots and form the holm or stems of the plant. Such buds are not under ordinary circumstances formed on roots. This budding of the tubers furnishes an efficient method of propagation, independent of seed production. Starch and other matters are stored up in the tubers, as in the seed, and are rendered available for the nutrition of the young shoots. When grown under natural circumstances, the tubers are relatively small and close to the surface of the soil, or even lie upon it. In the latter case, they become green and have an acrid taste which renders them unpalatable to human beings and as poisonous qualities are produced, similar to those of many solanaceae, they are unwholesome. Hence the recommendation to keep the tubers in cellars or pits not exposed to the light. Among the 900 species of solanum, less than a dozen have this property of forming tubers. The production of small green tubers on the home in the axils of the leaves of the potato is not very infrequent and affords an interesting proof of the true morphological nature of the underground shoots and tubers. This phenomenon follows injury to the phloem in the lower parts of the stem, preventing the downward flow of the elaborated sap. Classification of Varieties, Plate 2 For the sake of convenience, the many varieties which are now on the market may be classified. No one classification, however, no one classification, however, will be adequate to cover all conditions. Varieties differ somewhat from one part of the country to another. Most standard varieties have many synonyms, which make the whole matter more confusing. The frequent appearance of new names for old varieties is as much the fault of the grower as it is of the seedsman. There is a strong demand for new things. The seedsman attempts to meet this, but most of our seedsmen are professedly not originators of new varieties, and the supply of strictly new varieties must, of necessity, be very limited, hence the demand is met by changing the name of some old variety and giving extensive advertising under its new name. The gullible grower accepts the dose, pays the price for the supposedly new article, and is satisfied until he learns that it is nothing new, and then he turns around and repeats the process again. 
the number of named varieties is so large that the chances of finding something far superior are very slight. However, it is not at all impossible to find such a variety if one has the patience to look for it or the skill to produce it. However, for the average grower, it is much better to stick to the old standard sorts which are recognized in the market. If better varieties are demanded, it is wiser. In general, to start with standard varieties which have already reached some degree of perfection and improve them. The potato is very susceptible to differences in soil and climate, and varieties often lose their distinguishing characteristics when grown under what might be considered unusual environment. There has also grown up, of course, a wide range of opinion as to what the standards of certain varieties are. The standard of a variety in one locality may be very different from the accepted standard of that same variety in another locality. The introduction of new varieties, which may be but slight variations from the old sorts, has still further complicated the situation. Moreover, many so-called new varieties are merely the old varieties under a new name, but on the whole, the old standard varieties may be recognized fairly accurately. Potatoes may be classified according to the shape of the tubers. Quote, tubers are not always of the same form. Three moderately distinct and fairly constant types are prevalent, namely, one round, two oval, and three kidney shapes. The round type is somewhat spherical and has fewer internodes and eyes than the oval or kidney-shaped potatoes. The kidney potatoes are thickest at the stem or basal end and taper gradually at the apex or seed end, while the oval varieties are thickest in the middle and taper towards both ends. See figure 7. These differences are sufficiently marked and constant for a comparison of the varieties in cultivation. Close quotes, Percival. Important varieties of Iowa and the Central West. C. C. L. Fitch, one. That's C. L. Fitch, Identification of Potato Varieties, I.O. Extension, B.U.L., I guess that's Bulletin, 20, 1914. Okay. C.L. Fitch of the Iowa State College made a thorough trial for a series of years of all varieties of commercial importance in the United States and Europe. He made also a canvas in person and by letter of the markets of the United States. The result was that only a few varieties were found to be of much commercial importance. He lists the following varieties as being the most valuable in the United States in order of their importance. Okay, these are potato varieties, I guess. One, rural. Two, Green Mountain. Three, early Ohio. Four, Burbank. Five, Irish Cobbler. Six, Bliss Triumph. Seven, peerless, and in parentheses, uh, pearl. Okay, so standard early varieties. So this looks like figure number seven. So one, early Ohio. Two, early rose. That's the one on top here. Uh, three, Irish Cobbler, that's on the bottom right. Four, Triumph. So again, Early Ohio, Early Rose, Irish Cobbler, and Triumph. Okay, the next one, Standard Late Varieties. So uh, these are early varieties. And standard late varieties of the potato. Lower right is number one, Burbank. 
Upper left, number two, Green Mountain. Lower right, number three, Rural New Yorker. And upper right, number four, Peerless. Fitch says that the varieties Rural, Early Ohio, and Irish Cobbler are the outstanding varieties of Iowa. In regard to the others, he makes the following comments. The following are grown in Iowa to a greater or less degree or reach our markets. Green Mountain, the second most important variety in the United States and a second best late sort for Iowa. Burbank, still the standard of the U.S. government for market quotations, formerly important in Iowa and at some seasons still important in the supply of her cities. Peerless or Pearl, by tested aims, ranking among the best late sorts, and often coming into her markets from Colorado or Wisconsin. Bliss Triumph, sometimes grown in Iowa for very early use, and extensively grown in the South for the supply of the early markets of Iowa and the northern states. William Stewart of the United States Department of Agriculture has recently made a very comprehensive and admirably arranged classification of potatoes. His bulletin contains not only a valuable key, but a careful description of our standard varieties of potatoes and points out many unnecessary synonyms. The reader is referred to this bulletin for this storehouse of information on potato varieties. Stewart gives the following classification key. Stewart's classification. Group 1, cobbler. Tubers, roundish, skin creamy white. Sprouts, base, leaf scales and tips slightly or distinctly tinged with reddish violet or magenta. In many cases, the color is absent. Flowers, light rose purple under intense heat may be almost white. Group 2, triumph. Tubers, roundish, skin creamy white with more or less numerous splashes of red or caramel or solid red, maturing very early. Sprouts, base, leaf scales and tips more or less deeply suffused with reddish violet. violet. Flowers, very light rose purple. Group 3, early Michigan. Tubers, oblong or elongate flattened skin white or creamy white, occasionally suffused with pink around bud eye cluster in early albino. Sprouts, base light rose purple, tips creamy or light rose purple. Flowers, white. Group four, rose group. Tubers, elongated or oblong, usually flattish at the center and tapering gradually toward each end. Stem and seed end rather blunt, Skin smooth, flesh color, flesh creamy white, sometimes streaked with red. Sprouts rather long, medium thick, and usually clearly tinted with rose lilac. Group 5, Early Ohio Group. Tubers, round oblong with full rounded seed and stem ends. Eyes numerous and rather shallow. Skin or flesh light pink with a deeper color around the eyes. Sprouts, Short, much enlarged at the base, color varying from carmine violet to violet lilac or magenta lilac. Group 6, Hebron group. Tubers, elongated, somewhat flattened, with rather blunt ends, occasionally spindle shape, eyes numerous, skin creamy, white, more or less clouded with flesh color or light pink. Sprouts, very similar to those of the early rose group. Group 7, Burbank Group. Tubers, long, cylindrical, or slightly flattened in shape, eyes numerous and rather shallow, skin white to dull white, smooth to glistening, or sometimes russeted. Sprouts, base creamy white or faintly tinged with magenta, flowers white. Group 8, Green Mountain Group. 
tubers, broadly roundish, flattened to distinctly oblong flattened. Ends usually blunt, especially the seed end. Eyes rather shallow, skin dull, creamy white, more or less netted. Sprouts, rather short and stubby, white or faintly tinged. Flowers, white. Group 9, rural group. Tubers, round, flattened to broadly roundish, oblong or distinctly oblong, eyes few, very shallow, skin creamy white and occasionally netted. Sprouts, short, base and large, dull white. Flowers, of fair size, central portion of corolla deep violet purple, shading to a lighter tone toward outside edge. Group 10, pearl. Tubers, round flattened to heart shape flattened, usually heavily shouldered, skin dull white, dull russet, or brownish white in section 1, or a deep bluish purple in section 2. Sprouts, section 1. Base, leaf scales, and tips, usually faintly tinged with lilac. Section 2. Base, leaf scales, and tips, vinous mauve. Flowers, white. Group 11, peach blow. Tubers, round to round flattened or round oblong, skin creamy white, splashed with crimson or solid pink, eyes usually bright carmine, including some early maturing varieties. Sprouts. Base, leaf scales, and tips more or less suffused with reddish violet. Flowers, purple. Group types according to Fitch. Group 1, rural. Tuber shape, wide and flat types when at best, ends rounded much like stem and usually not recessed. See figure 7. Tuber and eye color. Blinds, white. First sprouts, yellow or waxy white, with bluish violet tips which change on exposure to light to dark or dull purple. Root stubs, yellowish white, free from purple. Stem, erect and touched with brownish purple. Foliage, green, darkened by the purple, and in state much more acrid, acrid than all green foliage. Blossom, bluish violet white. Group 2, Early Ohio. Tuber shape. Somewhat flattened and slightly tapering with stem end at a least bit recessed, eyes are unevenly distributed and numerous. See figure 7. Tuber and eye color. Skin brownish pink, almost white to red, changing on long exposure to light to a weathered gray brown. First sprouts are white or greenish white with lilac tips. Foliage, medium green. Blossoms, lilac white. Group 3, Irish Cobbler. Tuber shape. The finest type is flat and wide like good rules, but there is a very distinct round, rough, deep-eyed type formed in poor conditions. In some cases, large types are pear-shaped and rough like the largest rurals and may combine the pear shape with the heavy eyebrow type of the rural. Tuber and eye color. Skin smooth yellowish white. Changing in the light to dull olive green with a suggestion of blue. Blinds white. Sprout leaves hairy, light green. Blossoms. Pink with white tips on petals. White blossoms not found on cobblers. Group 4. Green Mountain. Tuber shape. The wasted or dumbbell type is characteristic. Stem ends somewhat recessed. See figure 7. Tuber and eye color. A fine, smooth, and quite brown netting is a feature of many of the tubers, an all-white variety. Foliage, bright green. Blossoms, white, buds, yellow. Group 5, Burbank. Tuber shape, long, largest at center, best type, shorter, wide, and flattened, poor type, spindle shape. Stem end flush, eyes shallow or flush, in poor conditions very subject to knots. See figure 7. Tuber and eye color. Blinds white, skin white changing in light to greenish gray brown. First sprouts white with light green tips. Foliage bright green, blossoms white buds yellow. Group 6, peerless or pearl. Tuber and eye color. 
skin white, or if ripened well, brownish white, coarsely cracked. Skin turns dull green in light. See figure seven. Blossoms white when born. Buds whiter greenish white. Stem and foliage vigorous bright green. Group seven. Bliss triumph. Tuber shape more or less roughly globul gob globular. Recess stem large tuber somewhat oval or nosy. See figure seven. Tuber and eye color, pink to red-brown skin, changing in light to grayish-red-brown. Blinds, pink to red-brown, sprout leaves, dark apple-green. Groups according to Kohler. Group 1, tuberosum group, characterized by foliage of the wild solanum type. Tubers of varying shape, usually with rather deep eyes below medium in size. Foliage relatively resistant to disease. Group 2, Rural Group. Rural New Yorker is the type of the group. Tubers characteristically short, smooth and flattened, skin white, eyes generally shallow. Group 3, Leo Group. Plants upright in habit, little or no purple in stems. Tubers roundish or somewhat elongated with uneven surface. Group 4, Waltman group. Plants medium erect, foliage fairly dense, tubers similar to those of Leo group, group not very well defined. Group 5, Endurance group. Plants very recumbent, leaves pure green, tubers light in color, elongated to medium in length. Group 6, Factor group. Plants fairly erect with dense foliage. Tubers generally roundish or short elliptical, comparatively even surface. Group 7, Sharps Express. Plants moderately erect, foliage dark green. Tubers rounded or slightly elongated, and surface comparatively even, flowers white. Group 8, Green Mountain Group. Plants medium upright, stem free from purple, Tubers medium in length with a tendency toward oblong form. White and slightly netted skin, eyes sunken somewhat. Let's see, standard types. Typical Burbank. Undesirable types. Late pride types of low market standard. Burbank group. Typical early rose. Coarse rose colored types commonly found in mixed car lots. Rose group. Typical rural New Yorker. Large coarse rurals which are off type rural group. Plate 2, Types of Potato Tubers, as illustrated by the Wisconsin Experiment Station. A careful selection of seed for a few years will gradually eliminate these undesirable types. Group 9, Michigan Group. Michigan variety, typical of the group. Tubers somewhat elongated, skin fairly smooth, a composite group with characters not well defined. Group 10, Ohio group. The early Ohio is typical of this group. Tubers oval in shape and only slightly compressed, eyes numerous and usually shallow, surface quite even. Group 11, cobbler group. Plants upright in habit, tubers white, pink or red, variable in shape and size. Groups according to Millward. Group 1, round white group. Tubers round to oval and slightly flattened. Surface generally netted. Skin white and flesh white. Flowers, white or purple. Group 2, long white group. Tubers, long oblong in shape and sometimes flattened. Skin and flesh white. Tabulation of varieties. The varieties of potatoes mentioned and described by Stewart, 
Millward, Kohler, and Fitch have been brought together in one table for convenience. Each variety so far as possible has been classified by naming the group into which it has been placed by one or more of the authors named. In this way, it is easy for any person to get an idea of a variety if he is unfamiliar with it by referring to the description of the group into which the variety is placed. Um, let's see, let's get to the beginning of this and then I'll go back along. And we'll just glance over it. Let's see, they give the names of the varieties. Stuart, oh, I see. So the name of the variety, and then the person who classifies it, it lists its classifications like Stuart, Millward, Kohler, and Fitch. So again, here's the varieties. And uh, their classifications according to the different people. Names of the varieties. Stewart, Millward, Kohler, Fitch. So these would be the names of the varieties and um, the classifications by the different people. Names of the varieties, Stewart, Millward, Kohler, Fitch. 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 Okay, so if you needed to see those, uh, I paused, I think, long enough for you to find it in the video. Not reading all of that. All right, synonyms. <clears throat> Frequently, potatoes belonging to well recognized varieties are renamed and sold as distinctly new sorts. This practice may be due to the fact that the seedsman or the grower is not familiar with all the standard varieties or it may be a fraudulent attempt to induce the farmer to pay a high price for seed of a supposedly new and superior variety. Then, too, the same type may arise in different parts of the country at about the same time and be given different names in each locality. Because of these conditions, we often have one variety masquerading under a number of different trade names. It is desirable that a single name be chosen for each distinct type, and that that name alone be used to designate tubers of the standardized type. The following list of synonyms, adapted from Stewart, may be found helpful in straightening out variety names. So, um, the synonyms and then the preferred name, like Acme is the synonym Early Acme is the preferred name. So I don't think I'm going to read all of these. But you see like Chenango is called Mercer and Chenango White is also called Mercer. So again, synonyms and preferred names, like the improved early rows is synonym to the early rows. Mm. 
Vermont champion is synonym to champion. Stray beauty is synonym to triumph. White bliss is synonym to pride of the South. White elephant is synonym to late beauty of Hebron. In the other video, the white elephant is the one where that lady won a prize for the amount of production she had in New York in like, I think it was 1888. All right, description of typical varieties. Below are given brief descriptions of the more popular varieties. These descriptions have been taken largely from Stewart. Let's see, I guess that's William Stewart, W.M. Stewart. USDA Prof. Paper, B.U.L., probably Bulletin, 176 in 1915. All right, Burbank, originated by Luther Burbank in 1873. Let's see, okay. Burbank, 1873, claimed to be a seedling of the early rose. Season, medium, late. Tubers, large, round, long. Eyes, shallow, but rather numerous. Skin, nearly smooth, white. Flesh, firm, fine-grained, of excellent flavor when cooked. Carmen, number one. That's rural New Yorker, number one. Originated by E.S. Carmen in 1889. Seedling of other seedlings. Season medium. Very few shallow eyes. Quality excellent. Flesh white. Vines very stocky. Country gentleman. Originated by G.W.P. Gerard Co. Season medium late. Vines of medium vigor and spreading habit. Flowers white, tubers long, cylindrical, eyes medium, skin light, buff, flesh white. Early rose, originated by Albert Bressy in 1861, season early, vine stout, erect, leaves large, tubers quite smooth, nearly cylindrical, tapering toward each end, eyes shallow, skin thin, tough, and of a dull blush color, flesh white, solid, brittle. Green Mountain, originated by O. H. Alexander in 1878, claimed to be a seedling for a cross between Dunmore and Excelsior. Season medium late, vines vigorous with dark green foliage, tubers short and chunky, flattened, not very regular. Eyes sometimes considerably depressed, skin nearly white, flesh fine-grained. Irish cobbler, of unknown origin, season extra early. Tubers nearly round, large. Eyes good, skin russet, finely netted, flesh white. Similar or identical with variety Eureka. Pearl mid-season, vine strong, medium to large. Stems medium dark green, rather stocky, erect at first, bending over as the season advances. Leaves large, flat, medium dark green, flowers white. Tubers medium to large, round flattened to heart shaped, flattened, usually broader at the stem end. Pinkish tinge about the eyes, especially when freshly dug. Skin dull white or light russet, usually roughened or cracked. Flesh solid and quite heavy. Rural New Yorker number two, originated by E. S. Carmen, introduced into trade about 1889. Season medium late, vines thrifty and strong, tubers oblong, inclined to round or round oval, rather flattened, eyes few, shallow, skin pure white nettled, netted, flesh white. Sir Walter Raleigh. Originated by E.S. Carmen, claimed to be a seedling of rural New Yorker number two, introduced into trade in 1897. Vines similar in habit and color of flowers to those of rural New Yorker number two, but color of stems not as pronounced. 
color of flesh and skin of tubers is the same. Quality better than that of Roe New Yorker number two. The references, uh, a, a, a Baker, a review of tuber bearing species of Solanum, C.L. Fitch, identification of potato varieties, uh, 1914, potato experiments and studies at University Farm in 1909, published April 1910, that's by Kohler, A.R., Millward, J.G., Commercial Varieties of Potatoes for Wisconsin, published July 1912. Percival John, Agricultural Botany. Uh, William Stewart, Group Classification and Varietal Descriptions of Some American Potatoes, March 27, 1915. 